If you're a fan of pumpkin and spice, you're gonna love this recipe for pumpkin whoopie pies with a spiced buttercream. And we're gonna make it with an ermine buttercream, which is one of the easiest buttercreams you could ever make. So let me show you how to do it. Welcome to the salted pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe is very simple. You don't need that many ingredients. It's absolutely delicious and you end up with these beautiful whoopie pies that you can serve or even freeze for later. So this is something you can make, individually wrap them, throw them in your freezer, and anytime you want that pumpkin spice flavor, grab one out. So what is ermine frosting or ermine buttercream? Well, it's an old fashioned type of buttercream that uses cooked flour, sugar, and milk. Now I'm using spices because we're gonna spice it up a little bit, but basically it's those three ingredients, right? and you just cook it slowly. Then you cool it and whip it with some butter. It is foolproof, really, and it's so easy to do. Much easier than a Swiss buttercream, and the flavor is excellent. All right, so let's get right into it. The first thing you wanna do is have a heavy bottom saucepan that's about one and a half quarts in size. You can go a little bit bigger, but this is a great size because it allows everything to heat up gradually and you will be less likely to have lumps. Make sure it's not a thin bottom or you may scorch your flour or sugar. All right, so we're gonna get that on the stove. You're gonna be cooking this over a low medium heat, medium at the most. It's gonna take probably about five minutes or so, but it's really easy to do. All right, first thing you're gonna add in is three quarters of a cup of sugar one third of a cup of flour. Then we're gonna put our spices in. The spices that I'm using is one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, a half of a teaspoon of nutmeg, quarter teaspoon of allspice, and a quarter teaspoon of fine brine sea salt. Put that right into your saucepan, and then whisk it up just to combine everything. So once you have everything whisked up, you wanna go ahead and turn on your stove to about medium, medium low. And then we're gonna slowly add in the milk. Now, what's really important is that you whisk constantly and add the milk slowly. You don't wanna add it too fast or you're gonna end up getting it lumpy, okay? I'm using a total of one and a half cups of milk and I've added about a quarter cup at a time. That seems to be a good rate while you're constantly whisking. Once all the milk has been incorporated, you constantly whisk again. Now you can start to turn your heat up a little bit at this point, which I'm gonna go from three to five and that's gonna thicken everything up. Once we get it thickened, then we let it cool. So it's been about five minutes. I've been whisking up the mixture and it's starting to steam a little bit. Now's when you're gonna start to see it thickening and it can thicken very quickly. So make sure you keep whisking the entire time and it's already starting to thicken, I can feel it. All right, so I've just removed it from the heat because I wanted to show you the consistency. What you're gonna wanna do is whisk it over that medium heat, because we increased it, remember, until it becomes about the thickness of a nice gravy. That is exactly what we want. All right, so now that we have our first part of our ermine frosting done, what you wanna do is put it into a container. Now you could also chill it right in the bowl or the pot that you cooked it in, that's fine. But what I like to do is transfer it to kind of a measuring cup. Makes it a little bit easier later when we add it into the butter to actually make the buttercream. So once you get it all out of your pot, then we are going to cover it with some saran wrap or any kind of plastic wrap that you wanna use. This is a cling seal. And the same kind of thing when you're making a pudding, because this is really the consistency of a pudding when you cook it or a custard before you chill it. And the same thing goes, you wanna get the plastic wrap down on the surface so it doesn't develop any kind of a skin on top. It's kind of a funny story about how I like stumbled upon this type of buttercream. I had no idea that there was such a thing as a flour buttercream. 
and I was at my assisted living, this is years ago, and I wanted to make a banana cake with like a swirl in it and I wanted to make a cinnamon frosting. I thought this is going to be so good. So it's like a cream cheese swirl with the banana cake and then the cinnamon icing. But I didn't have not a bit of powdered sugar, not a bit. And I did not have enough eggs to do like a Swiss buttercream. I'm like, what in the world am I going to do? I'm thinking, well, flour will thicken things. I wonder if there's a flour buttercream. Sure enough, there it was. And when I made it for the first time, I'm like, wow, this is so easy. So if you're afraid of making buttercreams because they split or um, you don't like tempering the egg whites and it, it just seems like a hassle, this is a really easy way to make a delicious buttercream with or without the spices. All right, now I'm gonna pop this into the refrigerator and while it chills, we will get on to making our cookies for the pumpkin whoopie pies. Now, one of the great things about this recipe is it's like a quick bread. So really, you don't need a stand mixer. You really just need a bowl and an electric mixer or just a whisk and you can do it by hand. It's super easy. Now, I've got my KitchenAid out here, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. But really, it's so easy to make without it. Don't worry about it if you don't have one. All right, two cups of flour. This is all-purpose flour. I, didn't, I don't weigh it out. I go by how the batter looks more than anything, but it is two full cups. And I also keep a little bit more over here for extra, okay, in case I need to add a little bit more. There's a certain consistency that you want to go for when you're making the cookie batter so that you have enough spreading so you have a nice cookie, but, and it's not too, you know, fluffy and thick, but you don't want too much. It can't be too wet. You know, you don't want it too sticky. So it's a little bit of a balance there. All right, so what I have in my spice blend is a half of a teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, or you could use kosher salt. I have one full teaspoon of cinnamon. Then I have a half of a teaspoon of nutmeg, a quarter teaspoon of allspice, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves. Now, if you're gonna omit the cloves, you could increase the allspice if you'd like, okay? All right, then we're gonna put that right into the flour. I'm also gonna add in the baking powder, which is one teaspoon of baking powder. And then what I like to do is just sort of mix this up a little bit just to get the spices dispersed. So spices can kind of clump sometimes when they hit liquid ingredients. So by doing this, you're going to reduce the likelihood that that's going to happen. All right, so... Now this recipe is not like a traditional cookie recipe. You don't have to cream anything together. Like I said, it can be done by hand. It can be done any which way you want. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting things into the mixer right now. We're gonna go ahead and add in the dry ingredients. That's not usual, right? When we're making cookies, we usually use the eggs and the butter and the sugar, but see, our butter is melted. So we're gonna start with the flour. Two cups going in with the spices and the baking powder. Then I'm gonna add in the pumpkin, which is one cup of pure pumpkin, whether you process a pumpkin yourself and get the pumpkin puree out, or you just buy it in the can, but not the pumpkin pie mix. That's totally different. This is just pure pumpkin. And one cup goes in there. One and a half cups of brown sugar. That's my preference. You could split it. You could use half white sugar, half half of the brown sugar, so three quarters cup of each. But I just like the flavor that the brown sugar gives to this kind of a cookie. A whoopie pie it is, actually. And then we're gonna add in two eggs. Four tablespoons of melted butter, but you don't want it too hot. So I melted it uh, before I started this, you know, cooking making process. So it's cooled down a little bit. Then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I have my oven preheating already on 325 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, if you're using a stand mixer, you wanna lock it in place and then just go on low speed. If you're using a hand mixer, you're gonna go on low speed. If you're using a whisk and a bowl, you're just gonna go on hand speed, right? And it's gonna be real easy to pull together. All right, that's it. It took maybe a minute. It's really easy. All right, now scrape down the sides though and scrape down your mixer attachment if you're using that just to make sure that we get everything well incorporated. 
now for the consistency because that's probably the most important part to be able to get the cookies to spread thin enough so that you can make a nice little whoopie pie sandwich um, which if you don't know what a whoopie pie is and i've gone through this this far into the video and i haven't even told you it is two soft sandwich cookies usually chocolate that has a filling in the middle which is usually like a vanilla cream or of some sort okay they are delicious the chocolate variety the chocolate and vanilla oh my gosh so so good Good. but so are these pumpkin spice ones they are perfect for the fall or your Thanksgiving dinner or just any kind of dessert or if you just want to preserve that pumpkin spice love throughout the year like I said throw them in the freezer you won't regret it they're delicious all right so the consistency now, normally what I would do is just take a scoop out and put it right on the parchment lined tray that I'm going to bake on. But since I'm showing you guys, I'm just going to use this little plastic lid. And what I do is I take the scoop that I'm going to use. And let me go over that real quick. So the scoops that I have here are one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and three tablespoons. The size scoop that you use will determine the size of the cookie. So if you're making a lot of cookies, you know, like let's say you're you're going to a party and you're taking a dessert and you want each person to have like a little bite size whoopie pie, which would be about two bites, you would use one tablespoon. Two tablespoons makes them a little bit bigger. Three tablespoons makes them huge. So this would be like equivalent of a slice of pie, maybe even more. I mean, literally, you could probably cut that into fours and serve four people with one of these, okay? So use your judgment in how big or small you want to make them. For the video, though, I'm going to make some of each size so you can actually see the differences, okay, to make that helpful. And we'll go over the timing differences. All right, back to consistency. So I take the scoop that I'm going to use, and I pull out some of the batter, and I drop it onto my cookie sheet. And basically, I can tell by how fast it starts to sort of flatten out if there's enough flour in there. You can also touch it. If it's super, super sticky like this is, it needs a little bit more flour. Now, don't get caught up in this, okay? Don't worry. Use this recipe and make your whoopie pies if you don't wanna play around with the consistency because they're delicious. The only thing is, if they're a little sticky like this is, they're gonna be sticky to the touch. So while traditionally a whoopie pie is kind of on the sticky side, that's not always the best experience when you're serving guests at a party, you know, for them to pick up their whoopie pie and get stuff all over their hands. So I like to make them a little bit drier when I'm serving them to guests especially. For me, I don't care. They're good this way, they're good a little drier, it doesn't matter, they're good anyway. So how do we fix sticky? With flour, of course. So I start off with one tablespoon because you really don't want it to become too stiff or then it's gonna be a dry cookie and not quite as soft as we like. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon at a time. I probably would say that I need about three to four tablespoons. Just, I mean, I've been making these a lot, so I kinda know. So I'm gonna put in about three and then I'll test it again. No, nope, four. So total of two and a quarter cups of that flour. All right, I'm gonna scrape down the sides and the mixer. All right, that is perfect. And I can just tell. So, um, you know, I, I know it might be hard if you're making it for the first time. And it still feels a little sticky, but it's not nearly as sticky as it was. So it's going to be good for what we want to do. So I would say at the tops, the first time you're making them, don't add any more than two and a quarter cup of flour. Or you may end up with just a really tough cookie, okay? It's better to be a little sticky than a little tough. Now we're going to get them onto our parchment lined trays. Now... How many trays you're gonna need will depend on the size you're gonna make your cookies, obviously. When I make them two tablespoons, I get about 24 cookies out of this. Now keep in mind, it's a double cookie recipe, so you're only gonna get 12 total whoopie pies, okay? 
And if you don't want to use the parchment paper, which I just find so easy for cleanup and it doesn't allow the cookies to stick at all, so I just love it. But you can obviously use a spray, you know, whatever you usually use to prepare your pans. So if you use a baker grease, you can do that. Just brush it all over. Or you can use um, flour and butter, you know, butter the pan and then sprinkle it with some flour. So anything works. All right, so once they're in the oven, I set the timer for 20 minutes and I chuck them at about eight minutes. Now we've got three different sizes, so we're gonna be pulling out different cookies at different times. All right, so it's been 15 minutes. Now at eight minutes, I checked, especially the little small ones that I was doing, just to make sure that they weren't overdone and they weren't done yet at all. In fact, when I was arranging the racks, which I did 10 minutes into the 20 minute cook, I put my fingers in a few, so I really knew that they were too soft. Anyway, now let's take a peek. It's been 15 minutes. The tops are firm, a little soft, but firm enough, and they're not sticky, which is great news. So my feeling is these little guys are probably done. So I'm gonna get the little ones off the tray, but I can kind of tell by these bigger ones, the way I touch them, that they're not quite done yet. So they're gonna go back into the oven. All right, so I've got most of them out of the oven. One of the trays that was on the bottom and then I flipped up to the top, rack 10 minutes into cooking, still was a little soft. It was the medium sized ones. So I just put them in for another two minutes and then I'll pull them out. Meanwhile though, let's see if we like the 15 or the 17 minute cook time. This one is the 15 minute softer bottom. This one is the 17 minute harder bottom. Both of them are, they're nice and soft, but they're not sticky. So that'll be a good eating experience. I have a feeling this one's going to be better, but let's find out. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is just break it open. Now you can see it's really nice and soft. Okay. Now let's see if I break this one open. Let's see if we can see any difference. No, they look identical on the inside. Okay. So let me take a piece. This is the 15 minute one. Very good. Mm. It tastes like pumpkin bread, so that's good. I don't know, they're both good. I think I like the 15 minute one, just a hair more. All right, now, keep in mind though, if you go to eat one of these, they're not really that sweet, okay? Even though there's a, there is a good amount of sugar in there, they're not gonna taste like really super sweet because we have that sweet buttercream, you know, that spiced filling that we're gonna put in. So that's on purpose. So as an eating cookie, I probably wouldn't like them as much, but as a whoopie pie, oh my goodness, they're good. This is the tray that I put back in for a few minutes because it was still a little soft and I was like, Jeff, what happened? I rotated the, the trays. They should have cooked at the right time. What in the world's the difference? It's the pan. They're not the same and they cook different. And I know this, you know, but same stuff happens to me that happens to everybody else, you know? There's so many different variables when you're cooking and baking that you're, you know, even somebody who's made these a hundred times, makes a mistake, okay? It happens. Thing is, they're not really gonna be ruined, they're gonna be fine, because I just put them back in for a little bit. So when you're looking at recipes and baking times, you're not using the exact same pan that they are, which of course, how many times are you ever gonna be using the same exact pan that they are? Give yourself some wiggle room. 
pan, certain pans like darker colored are going to cook faster. So you can do one or two things. You can lower your heat a little bit or you can ink, uh, lower the time a little bit. Now I'm gonna show you the differences between these two pans. So they look kind of similar, right? This one's a little bit bigger, but that's not the issue. It's the thickness. This one is from Pampered Chef. This is from Sam's Club. Now look, I love these, okay? These are fantastic. I use them all the time. In fact, I, I test my recipes on them all the time. And then I use this one a little bit more for video, but I'm not gonna be able to do that anymore because this one is, well, I'm gonna call it more insulated, okay? Because it's thicker. And it's heavier, like you can feel it. So things cook slower. Nothing wrong with this pan. Nothing wrong with this pan. It's just a little bit different design, a little bit different temperature difference. So if I had a dark pan next to it, it would be fastest cook, medium cook, slowest cook. Okay, so those are the things that, that we run into because we all use different kinds of pans. So if you're using a real thin aluminum type of cookie sheet, like the old kind that are real, real thin, your whoopie pies may only take, you know, 12 minutes, 10 minutes even, you know? So definitely start checking at the eight minute mark, which is what I do because I like to see how are they cooking. Then once you've made them a couple times, you're gonna know your pans, you're gonna know your oven, and you're gonna know your whoopie pies. And then you're gonna be able to say, yep, they always take 12 minutes and that's perfectly fine. And so leave them in for the 12 minutes. Unless of course you do what I do and switch things up at the last minute and then you're gonna to need to start watching them again at the eight minute mark. All right, when you go to make your uh, frosting or your filling for your whoopie pies and you're using the technique that I'm using, the first thing we wanna do is whip up the butter. I have one and a half sticks of butter, which is 12 tablespoons. Put that right into my stand mixer. It does make it easier if you have a stand mixer for this, but if you don't, you can use a hand mixer, it'll be fine. But you wanna mix this butter up, you wanna whip it. That's why I have the whisk attachment and not the paddle attachment, because you want it to be really nice and light and fluffy. So it's also important that you use room temperature butter. Not melted, not cold, just room temperature. So we're gonna lock it in place and I'm gonna go on high and it's gonna take two to three minutes to really get this butter whipped so it's real nice and fluffy. All right, that looks good. Now, before I start to slowly add this in, which I'm gonna do with the mixer running, so I'm not gonna try to talk over that, I did wanna tell you that this is now room temperature. So I put it in the refrigerator, but I only left it in long enough to make the cookies and allow them to cool a little bit, and it just cooled down to about room temperature, okay? So if you make this up like the day before and it's refrigerated overnight, bring it out a couple of hours before you wanna use it. It's important that the temperature of the butter Butter is about the same as the flour sugar spice mixture when you're gonna combine them together. That's gonna give you a nice, smooth, light, fluffy frosting, icing, filling, whatever you're gonna use it for. We're gonna use it as a filling for our whoopie pies. All right, so now I'm gonna go on uh, low to medium speed and add this in in a stream slowly, or you could spoon it in, you know, one spoonful at a time and let it whip in with the butter. All right, once all the mixture's added in, go ahead and scrape down the bowl. And of course, get your hands really dirty like I just did because that's always so much fun when we're making frosting. All right, so get it all scraped down. We're just gonna beat it just another minute just to incorporate this. Then I'm gonna put the paddle attachment on. And what that does is smooths it all out, gets the air out and just makes a really nice icing. And I wasn't kidding about getting messy. Oh well, that's the fun of cooking sometimes, right? If there's anything left on the side, just go ahead and move it down in there right now and then we'll put the paddle attachment on and you just need to blend it a minute or two. All right, so that is done. Now, I wanted to show you something that I did 
um, kind of by accident. I didn't mean to. I stacked these too soon, so they weren't completely cool. And then I kind of moved them over on the cutting board so that one was on top of the other. Don't do that <laughs> because if they're not completely cool, you're going to end up getting some of the bottoms onto the tops here. Then you don't have a nice smooth cookie like that. So anyway, don't do that. Let them cool completely. Use two cooling racks. I was just trying to get by with one and it didn't work out so well for me. Okay. There's one of the small ones. Medium. And the large one. Move these just like that. All right. The amount of filling that you put in, of course, is up to you. But usually what I do is the same scoop size. So if you made them all one size, you're just going to use the same scoop. Just go in, scoop out the filling and put it right like that. And there you go. You have your whoopie pie. Now, if you wanted to double up on the filling, you can. There we go. Perfect. All right, so now you can see all the different sizes, but they all taste exactly the same. Now, to store them, what you're gonna do is, if you wanna just store them like to serve in the next day or so, put them on a parchment lined um, tray, and then in between the layers, put some parchment paper, put them in the refrigerator. Make sure they're totally covered. You can put them in the refrigerator, perfectly fine. If you wanna store them for long term, for you know to freeze them, I would put them on a parchment lined tray, uncovered, just one single layer, freeze them, then you can remove them, wrap them in plastic wrap, and then put them back in your freezer. And then you can grab individual ones out. Or you could put all the plastic wrap ones into a large bag, okay? All right, here we go. Delicious pumpkin whoopie pie with a spiced filling. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mmm, they are so good. Oh my gosh. I cannot tell you how delicious these are. They're really easy to make. They are absolutely delicious. And if you've never tried a pumpkin whoopie pie before, give these a try. But if you don't like pumpkin, then definitely try the regular ones that are usually, you know, chocolate with uh, vanilla icing because, oh my gosh, whoopie pies are amazing.